So guys, I think when Rachel and I uh, arrived here on, uh, on Friday, uh, David turned around and said, I've got something a bit special for you. Yeah, and uh, this is David's uh, version of special. Please welcome Bertie the Boar. <laughs> I mean, I think 150 kilo English wild boar. Um, we've got it on the cradle. We were going to put it up on the uh, on there, but I think it's quite wise that we didn't put it up on there. It. Now, wild boar are very different to deer in the way they skin. The skin actually needs to be carved off of the animal, and rather than having a Rather than having basically like a deer, you can get in between the skin and the actual flesh and it can peel off. Quite a few years old, it's a big tusker, got enormous really big teeth on the front of it there. And those teeth basically, uh, probably two thirds of the actual tooth is within the gum. So when you see the basically the curved teeth that are basically taken from trophies, uh, a lot of that is basically heard within the, the, gum, uh, the gum there. You're going to start off by basically taking the head off. If you can just hold the front legs there. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to come around the back here and we're going to basically take the head off by cutting down across and into what's called basically the atlas joint, which is at the back of the head. So what we're going to do is we come in behind the head, the neck, where the ear is, yeah, and then cut right across there. And we'll go to the other side. Try and basically just be careful not to overbalance this because obviously it's a very big animal. Yeah, for what we're doing. Up we go on the inside. And we're just going to where that joint is, where the joint, where the basically the head meets the, the spine of the animal. So it's at the bottom of the neck. That's what we're looking at. Just turn it one side. Yeah, and then cutting all the way along until we get into that joint, the atlas joint. Just gonna, you hold on to it, just going to twist it slightly. You go, twist it slightly. Did you say you're weighing about uh, 20 kilos the head, Jose? Around about 20 kilos, yeah. yeah. And you're using what knife? Tell everybody. Um, I'm using basically a bowling knife, a flint and flame bowling knife to take that off. So lift it up slightly. This is hard and it looks. There we go. We're into it now. There we go, there's the head off. That's the head. So next we're going to take the, uh, the trotters off. Cut round. And we're looking for the joints. If you look, see how flaccid that goes, basically loose on the joint. And that means that we're into the right place where we're basically cutting on the joints. Once you've done that, you should be able to just turn it, twist, and break. In theory, yeah. There you go. And then just look, take those off. You see the toes completely loosen up on there. And that's when they're cutting the right place. They're very short the actual toes on a, on a wild boar. Um, they've got very strong legs. They run very fast. Um, yeah, and a lot of power within the actual leg. Again, again, with the back legs here, yeah, we're looking for the toes to basically be sort of loose when we're cutting into them, to make sure that we've cut into the right place. So basically, the, I shot a wild boar first time I ever went to um, the Czech Republic. And, uh, I was out there basically with a guy that um, a guide that took me out, and I didn't speak Czech and he didn't speak English. And uh, after basically sitting in a high seat for ages, and those of you that know me will know that I don't like high seats. I, don't, I, don't, I tend not to basically sit in high seats. And um, anyway, this guy basically sort of was explaining to me about you know how wild boar act during the day and where they are. And uh, in the end, he sort of said to me, look, do you want to go and find wild boar in the forest? Sleeping. And I said, yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. So in Google Translate, he wrote to me, take your rifle, take it down and zoom down to nothing, take a knife and nothing else. Okay, so I typed into my little Google Translate, is it dangerous? He looked at it, looked at me and went, <laughs> uh, 
Well, as you can imagine, it is. So we went off into the woods and uh, we started basically looking for wild boar. We, after quite a bit of time basically walking through, we found uh, what were three or four wild boar basically sitting underneath a tree, uh, snorting away. And wild boar have very, very poor eyesight. Uh, they've got great sense of smell, but really poor eyesight. So you can pretty much, as long as the wind's the right way, you can get in quite close to them. They've got a great sense of smell, uh, so you've got to be careful with that, with the wind. But um, as we approached them, they were about sort of 40, 50 yards away, and they were snorting around, and he sort of picked one out, and he said to me, shoot that one. So, okay, so I got the rifle up, basically aimed, took the shot. After I took that shot, there weren't three wild boars, there were 20 wild boars that were all sneaking underneath the trees, which I hadn't seen. They got all up and they all ran towards me. I jumped and screamed like a girl, right? These things were running past me, trying to knock me over. It was incredible, the amount of basically balls that were there. Um, but the one we shot went off the opposite way and we actually got into, we found where it had gone uh, after we tracked it a small distance. And when we got into that small distance, right, we saw it lying there. Uh, and as it was lying there, it was lying there like that, with its head down and its eyes closed. And the guy, and I thought, oh look, there it is, it's great. He walked over to it and he went, no, 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 stop, stop. And again, he Google translate to me and he said to me, if it's sitting there with its eyes closed like that, it's still alive. He said, put another shot into it. So I put another shot into it and it sort of killed over to the side. Yeah, and he, was, he told me a story of one about this sort of size that he'd shot. And as he, was, uh, as he shot it, it ran off and it did exactly the same thing. And as he walked towards it, it got up and launched straight at him. And luckily it was a tree and he ran up a tree. Yeah, so you've got to be really, really careful with them as you're, as you're coming into them. Um, the actual parts of the front here, the, these bits here, yeah, will be solid, especially if it's a mature boar, because they're always fighting. Yeah? And as the more they fight with those tusks, and the more they bang into each other, the, the stronger and the tougher the muscles become. Uh, and it's sort of like basically a bit of wood on the front of it. So they've got like armour plated, so when you're shooting at them, yeah, sometimes the bullets can just bounce off of them. <laughs> I remember the first, I think it was the first year, wasn't it, Rachel, we found the bullet inside it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Mike and I were basically taking it apart, yeah. and it was yeah. a bullet gone straight into the shoulder, and Mike dug the bullet out. I remember so. that, and I also remember cooking the testicles. Yes. <laughs> remember me cooking the testicles the first year? Rock, Rocky Island oysters, are they called? Cool? Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, Prairie oysters, that's uh, what they I took them, I remember you and Mike threw them at me. Um, I then took them out of my sack and I soaked them in milk, egg and crumb them, and deep fried them in the back and took them out for everyone to try. Funnily enough, it was mainly the women who tried them. So here we've got the, the first half of the ball here basically with uh, we're going round the neck and round the legs. And uh, Stuart's here basically, he's got the one leg completely off now and he's working his way down the belly. And we're trying to keep as close to the skin as we can. Now these bony knives, these flint and flame bone knives are great because they're, they're not flexible, they're quite tight and they've got this curve. And that curve allows us you to basically get behind them. You see that the way that knife can get behind, underneath. And it works really well with venison as well. So that tip is doing the cutting. I'm not using the blade, I'm using the tip of the knife. And it's just pulling the, the skin away from that as we're cutting. There's not a lot of fat on this part of the animal. Most of the fat's going to be in the back here. So again, we're using the tip of the knife, we're pushing the tip of the knife in and we're going sort of like that, yeah, rather than the actual cutting. We're working by basically going from one side to the other side to get all of the, the fur off on one side, then we'll tint it slightly and then work round to the back. And then we'll go the other end and work round to the other side of the back. That way what we're doing is the skin is flopping onto the floor and it's keeping away from the meat. So any of the dirt is keeping away from that meat. And it's important that we do it that way. From the boar, another boar that we had, we've taken the belly and uh, I put it in cider and uh, a little bit of uh, garlic and some cloves, uh, sorry, some um, uh, blah, 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 sage. Sage. Uh, yeah. And sage, so a classic, classic sort of pairing there for pork. Yeah, here we go. And uh, we put it in together and basically uh, we put it into a vacuum pack bag and I sous vide it. Now if you, don't, if you haven't got sous vide, you just basically put it in the oven with uh, the same sort of flavourings here, put it, cover it over into an oven dish and just cook it in the oven so for probably about four hours at 170, 180. Um, and then what I was sous vide, what I did is I cooked it at 73 degrees overnight for about 14 hours. Then what we've done, in the bag, 
just put heavy weight in them and press them. And then taking it out of the bags, and then those juices we put into the bottom of the dish there, yeah. put it into the oven so the juices basically start to evaporate and go into the meat. And then you get a lovely colouring on the top of the fat, sort of basically coloured. When we're talking about refrigeration, on a carcass of uh, venison, what we do is basically, once the animal's been shot, and we bring it back home to the larder, so let, let the animal cool down a little bit outside if you can, if it's in winter, to allow the animal to basically, some of that heat to come out of the carcass. And then we put it into the fridge. Now the, the, the Huntsman game larder that we've got here, we've got two of them here. This one here has basically a couple of deer in it already. Uh, and you can see the deer, there's one jack and a right a fallow basically hanging in there. And what we're doing is we put the deer in there, and we'll put them in there around about sort of like seven to eight degrees. Uh, 7 to 8 degrees will allow the cars to cool down slowly. Now, why don't we do that? Why don't we just put it in at 4 degrees? Well, the reason is because if you walk into a fridge, yeah, and it's basically warm out here, you walk into the fridge, you'll go like that, yeah, because it gets cold. Well, the carcass does exactly the same thing, the meat does exactly the same thing, and it will shrink, yeah, and it will basically sort of like compact itself. So what you want to do is you have gradual cooling. So you go from basically outside, basically once it's cooled down, going into the fridge at about 7 to 8 degrees for a few hours, then take it down five degrees overnight, and then the following day, basically take it to one degree. And at one degree, then you can hold that carcass. Now, with those larders, basically, when we designed them, we designed them so that basically they would take maximum, basically, recall into it. So it's going to re-chill the fridge really, really quickly from anything you put in there. On top of that, it's got a fan in there that will basically suck out any moisture and also basically blow air around to cool it perfectly. So you can feel here, if you look, if you look at that, Stu, feel that bit there. You feel how this, it, it looks like a piece of cardboard in there. See, see that there? That is the skin, how tough and thick that piece of skin is there. So we're talking about sort of like nearly, basically, what, half an inch, three quarters of an inch of like padding on the outside of that skin. It just goes to show you know, how powerful these animals are. If, you're gonna, if you drop a bullet into it, into there, that'll just basically get embedded straight into there. We've bought um, the shots, so basically to either take a neck shot, which this animal's had a neck shot, head shot, yeah, well basically if you're going to go for a chest shot, uh, a chest shot through there, but you need a good, a good manly bullet to get through there, to basically, if you hit a rib, yeah, it's not going to go any further. So we're just working our way along, we're trying to get down as far as what the bar will allow us to go, before we start to turn it. We're, ne we're nearly there on the back legs. Okay. And, and we're Craig, starting to... Craig, that was a good idea. Hello? Sorry? The cradle was a good idea. It was a good idea, yeah. Kids oh. cradles, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Lots of people thinking, oh, that's going to be too heavy to go on kids cradles. But no, it worked absolutely perfectly. So just so if you turn, one day actually better to grab the skin. Just turn it that way, a little bit more, a little bit more. That's it, perfect. Right here. Yep. So we've turned it so we can get onto this side. We're going to carry on on the back here. We'll go as far as we can on this side and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it back the other way and then hopefully make both of them meet in the middle. See that the way that that curvature of that knife is getting in there. Anybody else? Yeah, just Fine. roll it that way. Yeah, roll it again. The bacon. It. Yeah, do the bacon next, sir. Yeah, are you going to explain about that? Yep, yeah, so what we've done with the bacon is uh, we wanted to get some, uh, do some cured bits. So for the cured bits, what we've done is we've basically taken the um, the, uh, the loin of the barbell okay. and we've added it into basically 100 grams per litre of water um, and cured it in there. So basically we've got curing salts. 100 grams of curious salt per litre water, about 10% brine. Oh and then we added that, uh, added the loin of the, of the, the boar to it. And then that loin was basically been allowed to sit in there overnight. Then the following day, again, we basically just uh, taken it out and so put it into a backpack bag and turn it again. Put it into a backpack bag and turn it again. And, uh, allowed it to sit again. Nearly there. We're nearly on the other side. I think we might turn it the other way again. Thank you. Okay. Right. And we're going to turn it up, turn it that way. Up towards you first. And then turn it a little bit more to this way. That's it. There you go guys, that's it, skin. 
That's where the, the bullet wound is. See the old bullet wound down there? There's a fair amount. Turn them around. Turn them around the other way. There you go. It's a fair old coat on that. That was a good. We're just trying to show you, literally, from, from the field to the plate. And there are many places that you can... that we do it. Well, we only do the game plan here, don't we? But, so what we're doing is cutting right down the middle of the animal. Can I just say that the trolley's going to draw the front, so you put your foot on it. That's it. I'll move it further up to the edge of the Let's try and do it on here. So pulling it forward like that, the weight's helping to break it, isn't it? The carpet. You can hear it. Just finish it in half here. Yeah. Well done, guys.